Welcome, I'm Steve Darcy with Go Engineer, and I thought today I'd take a little time to uh, kind of go over some uh, some little exercises and stuff that I did at a micro event here in the Austin office. So you can kind of see I've got some uh, simple algebraic looking things, and uh, for the most part these are all solids, uh, circles, you know, you could actually just extrude those and make a cylinder. You could also just draw a rectangle and then revolve it and get the cylinder as well. Uh, spheres actually come from a uh, half of a uh, arc and then just revolved. Uh, squares, those are pretty simple. Just draw a rectangle and extrude it. And same thing, pyramid shape here, you can kind of do the same thing, draw a rectangle, extrude it, and then also create draft while you're extruding. Um, so what I wanted to kind of do here is uh, just kind of start with some of the same shapes, except instead of doing um, a extrude on the features ribbon up here, you actually have a surfacing ribbon. If you right click, you can get all your different tabs up here. So I've turned on surfacing. And I just want to show you that surfaces are not crazy things. They're the exact same things as you're making with solids, except for their 2D components. They're actually 2D components in a 3D space. So you can see it's just a, a, a two-dimensional surface. So kind of same thing if I wanted to do a, a quick little rectangle. Just draw a rectangle out there. And same thing, you can go to the surfaces ribbon, do extrude, and you kind of see I have revolve and loft and sweep and all those good things as well. So I'm going to kind of go through a couple of those and give you some good techniques for uh, for some surface modeling. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm going to switch over to uh, this wave spring washer because I want to show you a couple things. Uh, here, this is I'm using a surface. And uh, to do this surface, I'm using uh, two 3D sketches. So I've got one 3D sketch, and you're thinking, how in the heck did I create that? Well, this one's actually an equation-driven. So on the spline little drop down here, you can see there's an equation-driven spline, equation-driven curve. So if I want to edit it, I just double-click on it. And the way this works is you have a, a T parameter, which is kind of your start point and your end point. You'll notice I'm using pi times 8 on that. So that way it's going around uh, four times. Pi is pretty much 180 degrees in radians. And so then I can add this T in there as I'm doing uh, some type of an equation in the X direction, in the Y direction, and also in the Z direction. So in this case, my uh, uh, diameter, if I look straight down on top of it, you can see it's a perfect circle. The diameter is actually 17.5. So if I times that by sine T, then that gives me a circle. So same thing, I'm also, I've got to change not only the X, but the Z direction. Uh, and then I'm changing also, I'm doing a, a cosine wave in the Y direction. And then I also want it to drop down, so that gives me the wave washer. Uh, so that's this little part right here, it's the minus 0.5. So every time I'm going around, I'm actually dropping down about a half an inch uh, times T. So I can do that two times. So I've got a, Two different sketches. Let me just edit this feature. That'll show me the two sketches. And then I'm just uh, going between this that 17 and a half inch diameter to uh, 14 and a half inch diameter, or millimeters. And you can kind of see I've got pure circles out there, and then of course I got the nice little waviness going around. So then I just uh, did a loft between one and the other, and then once I get that lofted surface, nothing crazy there. Uh, then I just do a thicken. So select on the surface, thicken it up. I did a uh, multi uh, through both sides and did 0.25 millimeter. So just make sure that it doesn't go into each other and you should have a nice looking uh, wave spring washer. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And let's take a look at this little guy. Um, for the most part, if you were wanting to put some holes through here, let's just kind of back this guy up. And I'm gonna unsuppress this feature. Uh, I would put some holes in, and I don't know if you knew, but if you use the, uh, the actual hole wizard, the hole wizard, if you just do positions and do a 3D sketch, then you'll notice that you can actually place holes on any faces. So that's kind of a cool thing, because it's always going to be normal to that face wherever I select on that plane. And that's pretty much how they wanted to create these holes right here. But the problem with doing that is that the holes that you create you kind of see that are at an angle. So if I'm going to go ahead and screw this into another part over here, then now I have to figure out what that angle is on the other part and kind of make that, makes it a lot more complicated. 
So it makes more sense instead of doing these things on a face like that, is to go ahead and create a plane. So I've got a plane out here. It's nice and straight. And then I've created my whole wizard and created the points on that plane. Now the problem with doing that is of course now that it's cut into the material, it's only cutting from uh, the, the point on down. And so I get this extra little skin that I need to get rid of. And surface work uh, actually helps out with that quite a bit. So here's kind of what how I'm going to do this. Uh, I need to use some of the faces that are in here. So on the surface ribbon, I'm going to do a uh, offset surface. I'll go ahead and select on both these faces. Now when I do that, uh, I'm going to set my offset to zero. And you'll see when I do that, it changes this thing to a copy surface. So I go ahead and say OK. Looks good. And now I have a surface bodies folder. And in the surface bodies folder, you can kind of see I've got these two guys. Now I've gone ahead and turned on my solids body folder as well. So that way I can turn the solid on and off as I need to. In order to get the solids body, when you only have one body, you need to right click on your top of the part, go down to hide show tree items. And in the hide show tree items, there's a solid body. It's going to be defaulted to automatic. And I've got mine set to show. I'll go ahead and say OK. And then that way I can select on that, hit the little eyeball, and turn the solid off. So you can kind of see I've got two surface bodies out there. And uh, in order to cut through that, I need to actually extend the surface around. So I'm going to do extend surface. And we'll just select on that guy. And there's some little edges in here. We'll go ahead and grab. It's good. You can only do one body at a time when you do extend surface. Let's go ahead and do the other one too. So again, just select on the edges. There are two options in this surface ex uh, extend. Uh, one is same surface, the other is linear. So those look good. I've got two cones. They're kind of going up through the part. We can turn our solid body back on. So you can kind of see now the surface is actually eating through there. I don't have any problem because I know it's the exact same surface that's coming up from that countersink. And so now I need, just need to do a trim surface or, a, I'm sorry, cut with surface. So I'm cutting a solid body with a surface. So I'm select on that. The only tricky thing in here is to make sure that the arrow is going to be the direction that you're going to eat the, the solid off of. So I want to get rid of the material on the inside. So that guy looks good. I'm going to do cuts with surface, select on the surface, flip that guy around, and say OK. So now you can kind of see it's eaten up that material. Uh, and then all I have to do is turn the surface bodies off. I'll select on both those guys, hit the little eyeball. And now I've got a good looking surface that's nice and conical. Uh, it's the exact same surface that we started off uh, using the whole wizard. And I got to use the whole wizard, so I'll have a whole call outs when I do my drawing. So that's a pretty good little technique for that. So another good feature, this doesn't really have to do as much with surfaces, but it will keep you from having to create a lot of surfaces. So I've got two separate solid bodies in here got this one called target it's just uh, created with a revolve and then I've got this other one called tool and it's just kind of plunging down into it you can see that the uh, the surfaces are not uh, cut or anything like that they're going through each other I don't have a hard edge there it's not a black edge so it's not hard so let's uh, take a look at this uh, there's not a toolbar out for this um, you can go find it in your search commands uh, but I'm gonna show you where it's at it's under insert features and it's called indent and it's really good for using kind of a, a tool. So I'm going to go ahead and this is the target body that I want to use. The tool body. So it's selecting. doesn't matter where I pick on it. It's picking the entire body. And so notice what it's doing is now I'm picking the, the selection area to keep. Well, I really don't want to keep that. Let me uh, clear that. And I want to rotate around the bottom side and select on that. So you'll notice what it's doing is it's taking the surfaces that it has and it's offsetting a certain certain amount. So let's make this uh, six millimeters. You can see it's a little bit smaller. I'll make it five. You can see it's a little bit smaller. So whatever my thickness of my part is, if I'm doing a plastic part, I want to keep that continuous uh, thickness throughout. So also what it's doing is the actual body itself, it's going to remove. It's going to get rid of that, cut into the part, offset it, kind of like the shell command, and then thicken it on the back end. So we can just hit OK. And now we just hide the tool body. A lot of times, especially if you're going to export this, you need to make sure you delete the tool body. Um, that way it doesn't get exported along with it. But you'll notice what's happening here is it's just doing a cut. It's removing that from the tool body. And then if I do a, a section view, 
looks pretty good. You can see I get a uniform thickness throughout the part. Probably should have left it on six. Once it's done with that, uh, then we can of course put fillets on this. And make it kind of cool looking. Alright, then uh, the only problem is with the indent command, I can only do one tool body at a time. So I need to uh, put three, you know, kind of do a circular pattern, do three of them around there, and then uh, create them. And actually, I take that back. Uh, in the newer versions, you can actually create multiple uh, tool bodies, so I can do multiples at the same time. So, so next, I've got a, a little solid base here. Uh, it's just created with a revolve, simple revolve. Uh, and now I want to do kind of a spiral shape, but I want the spiral shape to kind of curve around like with the helix. So uh, I've already got a little spline, uh, spline grid sketch here. So let's go look normal to that. And I want to create a spline inside this shape. So we'll just get this little spline command. Start here. I'm going to and pick two points. I want it the center of it there. And I've made it this little grid. A lot of times I'll do this when I'm trying to control a spline. So it makes it a lot easier to, to tell the spline what to do. So like say for instance right here on the very tip, I want to make sure that this uh, handle is actually hor uh, vertical. So now I'm creating that vertical relationship. Same thing, I can uh, select on this spline handle, make him vertical. That way this is the outermost quadrant of that uh, spline there. You can kind of do the same thing down here, make this guy vertical. And then I can also create relationships. I can select on the points, the center line, and another point and create a symmetric relationship. And what that's going to do, add one more selected. There we go. It is symmetric, and then I've got two more. So point and line. There we go. So now what happens is when I move one, you can kind of see it's symmetric about that center. So that's uh, a nice smooth shape. That looks pretty good. So kind of same thing, we're going to surfaces. We're gonna do a revolve surface. My axis is gonna be the center of this. And so I've just created that revolve surface there. So simply just revolving a, a spline. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my uh, solid body so it doesn't get in the way for a bit. And then the next thing I wanna do is uh, create a new sketch on the front plane. I wanna reuse my surface revolve spline grid here, so I'm gonna show it. And I'm just gonna steal this uh, center line right there. So we'll go and do a convert entities. You can see it's a straight line, that's good. Finish out of the sketch. That's gonna be my path. So I'm gonna go up there. So then I need to create another one. Front plane again, new sketch. Just get the line command. Just start right there and drag it on out. And I just wanna make sure that it's far enough out to the outside uh, of this this part right here. We'll finish out of that. And that's pretty much it. So I've really just got two lines. I'm gonna turn my spline grid off and then I'm gonna sweep this line about that line. And I'm gonna do this with surface sweep. So swept surface. My profile is actually this line. My path is this line. Pretty simple, it's just a straight plane. It's what it's originally gonna give me. But if I go underneath the options, I can tell it to do a twist. I'm going to specify a twist value, and we'll do uh, 360 degrees. And so now as it's sweeping up along that line, it's going to spin this guy 360 degrees. So it looks pretty good. That's a simple, easy way to uh, create a little helical structure. And it's a sweep, so it's a, a surface. And really, I created these two surfaces really just to get my center line of my little grid that I want. So I'm going to do a 3D sketch on the sketch tool bar, the ribbon up here at the top. I'm going to hit the little sketch drop down and do a 3D sketch. And then I'm going to go convert entities and do an intersection curve. And I'm going to select on both of these surfaces. Now what's going to happen is it's going to be the intersection, hit the OK check mark, uh, between those two surfaces. So you can kind of see the nice smooth curve there and I can control it with the spline on the inside and then of course it's just doing a 360 degree curve um, from the top and the bottom.
So that's kind of the crazy thing is I really just needed these two surfaces just to create that, that 3D sketch. So then select on those, we'll hide them. Next, I need to uh, create a plane on uh, the bottom. Actually, I do have a plane already on the bottom, so we'll just use this top plane. And I got to hop out of the 3D sketch. There we go. And then I'm going to do a new sketch on the top plane. Go ahead and draw a circle. And put a dimension on it. Just make it five. And then I need to place the circle. Let me zoom in here. The center of the circle needs to be on that spline point. Okay. So there's a little, a nice little feature. It's called a pierce. So I'm going to pick on the center point. Hold down control, select on the entire spline. Don't pick on the end point, pick on the spline, and then you can do pierce. And that'll make sure that wherever that spline is going through that plane, because this is a 2D sketch, uh, it's gonna be piercing through that center point. So it's just a point onto a spline curve. I use that quite a bit. So now that I have my profile, finish out of the sketch, and on the surface, or actually this is gonna be a feature. So I'm gonna go to Swept Bosser Base. Um, my sketch is my profile, and then the 3D sketch is the path. So that looks pretty good. And then with that in there, uh, next I need an axis. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on our revolve body. And underneath that, I do have my temporary axis I can turn on. And then I can do a circular pattern. And I did this as a separate body, so I want to make sure that I turn my body's check mark on. Select on him. And then my center, my center axis is going to be this axis right there. And we'll go ahead and put six of these guys in there. Nine is not going to quite fit. Actually, eight. It looks like it'll fit. Nope, they're touching. So let's go down to six. Good enough. So that looks pretty good. Looks pretty smooth. Let's go ahead and turn off our temporary axis. And I've got a, a good looking shape. I'm controlling it again with just a simple spline grid for the revolve, the outside skin of that, and then that 360 degree curve. So that's a really good technique for making some really complicated geometry pretty quick. All right, so next um, I've got this little uh, base frame and I wanted to sh show you some things that we can do. And in this case, this is an imported solid. So it's an imported part. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of smart features. Uh, I fixed some surfaces and some problems that I was having down in this area. Uh, but other than that, the rest of this stuff is dumb features that are out there. Uh, dumb meaning that they're not parametric features that I can go and edit and change in here. So in this case, maybe I want to uh, take off this part. And to do this, uh, it would be a little bit time consuming to kind of model and cut and do all that stuff. But surface modeling uh, lends itself very well to uh, fixing this, this type of stuff, these structures. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a delete face and uh, we'll select on these. And I, would, I do wanna make sure you know that originally I did have a, uh, a, 3D, a 3D part. So it wasn't a surface part. But as soon as I delete these faces, if I just do delete, um, so okay, you'll notice that now I'm actually changed over to a surface body. So it's now the entire structure has become a surface body. So here's a, a little technique that's uh, kind of tricky to find. There's not really a, a button or anything for it, but uh, I can select on this edge. Let me go ahead and pick on the rest of them. There you go. Oops, got the face, let me pick the edge, there we go. Now I'm just gonna hit delete on the keyboard. When I hit delete on the keyboard, it says, hey, do you wanna delete the feature or delete the holes? So I'm gonna delete this whole gap. Now the trick is that this face down here at the bottom has to extend past this thing. If this whole circle went up and filled up, then I have a surface over here and a surface over here. But because these are uh, one contiguous surface over here and one up here, it, then it knows how to patch that thing up. So I can say delete holes, go ahead and say okay. Give it a second, and there we go. So this is the delete hole command. Okay. So kind of the same thing, but a little bit different. I'm going to uh, use, instead of just the delete holes, I'm gonna use this thing called untrimmed surface. And with the untrimmed surface, I'm just gonna select on the, the circular face there. 
and kind of what it's going to do is go in and extend it on the bounds of the uh, extended surface. So I'm just going to say accept the defaults, just hit OK. And I do have the checkbox merge with the original, so it's going to merge with the original uh, surface. Now I still have, so it's nice and clean, looks good, I still have a surface body. So in order to put this back into a solid, uh, in this case I need to uh, knit it or thicken it. Now since I only have one surface body, then I'm going to use thicken. If I have multiple surface bodies and I want to put them together, then I'm going to use the knit command. You can kind of see it's knitting multiple surfaces. So I'm going to go ahead and do thicken. I've got that surface untrim selected and there's a little checkbox there if it creates an enclosed volume. If this is grayed out, then I still have a gap or something that I need to go fill up. So I can click on that, go ahead and say OK. And you can see now I'm back to a solid body and I've cleared out those uh, little faces there. So a good little technique for that. Let's move on. So I've got this uh, bicycle frame. And in the bicycle frame, I need, I've need i got a really complex little area here that I need to, uh, to work on. And so let's kind of take a look at that. First off, I'm going to sketch um, on this flat face, the right side plane. We'll do a new sketch. And I want to kind of show you what will happen if I just do the arc command. And let's pick about right there. Kind of pull this back. Looks good. Let's go ahead and do one more. I'm going to cut it down here. That looks good. So I can use these, uh, these, this little sketch to to trim the surfaces. So notice that I have not, I'm still in the sketch mode, but on the surface ribbon I can still do trim surface, and I can select the part. In this case, I've got remove selections. I want to remove this face right there, and then I'll right click. That'll hit OK. That'll get me out of the command. So notice what it does is now I've got this curve along this uh, surface, and the curve is completely uh, just one entity there. But I don't want it to be one entity because I need some of this stuff to kind of come up into this area, some to kind of uh, loft into the other ones. So I need to do this a little bit different. So I'm going to edit the sketch. Go back to normal too. Let's zoom in up here. So here I'm going to right click on the, uh, the arc and I'm going to go ahead and do split entities. And I want to split this guy. I'm going to do it kind of up here near the top. And then another one down here near the bottom. And I also want to split this guy too. I'm going to use him in my next feature. So that's pretty good. Click out of split. And then when I finish out of there, still doing a surface trim on the top. But now notice what it does is I can select on this curve separate than the other ones. So wherever that point came through, these separate entities, it actually makes separate curves on those surfaces. That's a really important thing. Uh, so let me go ahead and reuse this sketch. I'm going to do show right there. I'm going to pre-select it and do a, a trim surface. And then I want to remove this face right there. All right, so that did good. Uh, next, I need to trim off this section. Go ahead and hide that. Again, do a new sketch on the front plane. I'm going to zoom in over here. And this one I'm going to use a spline. And I'm going to use some of these curves to kind of control it a little bit. a little bit more. There we go. I need to get them away from each other a little bit. Now I should be able to straighten that up. Straighten him up a little bit. I want to get that pretty close to that outside the little skin of where this uh, transition is coming about 90 degrees. Good. And then kind of same technique, I need to come in here and uh, kind of smooth this out. Or not smooth it, but uh, I need to create in a another point. So I need to do uh, split entities. 
Sorry about that, but it's way down at the bottom. So we'll pick on that. Point somewhere about right there. And then I'm going to split it again. Uh, about right there. So we'll get out of split entities. Uh, we'll go right into surfaces, do trim surface. And again, I want to get rid of this little inside area. And again, what that does is when it cuts it, notice I've got this little edge up here. So now that I have these two edges, then I can go in and do a lofted surface. Click on that, click on that. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to uh, tangency to face and tangency to face. Since these are faces coming off of here, I can control what that tangency looks like. And I can use this little number here to increase how far the kind of the gravity is that I'm pushing away from that thing. You can see I'm changing the curvature a little bit while I'm doing that. Make it nice and nice and smooth. All right, so that guy looks good. Do the same thing on the bottom, off the surface. Now, if I pick on this other side, it shows me it's. Oh, I got the surface body. Let me get him out of there. There you go. See how they're crisscrossed? So you need to make sure that when you select on that. I select in close to this edge, I also need to select close to this edge. And then I get my little connection points and that looks good. So same thing, we go to our start and end constraints, we'll say tangency to face on both. And kind of look down in there, we can play with this a little bit. Let's go about 1.5. like that and then I need to uh, these two need to come together so same tool off the surface and you can also use a boundary surface a lot of times I'll use that uh, especially if I have another cross section in between here I have the surface body selected again so let's get rid of them. and then I usually look at the side view of this thing I'm going to put about a 3 in there, let's see what that looks like. That's a little bit, a little bit too far, I think. Let's go back to about a 2. The preview is good. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Alright, and then the last part is really tricky, and uh, this is where we're just going to use a surface fill. So go up here to Filled Surface. I need to select on the Outer Loops. I haven't stitched these together, so sometimes you can use right-click selections for uh, select outer loop. In this case, I'm just going to do it the loop. That's where I'm doing a lot of work. Uh, so that looks pretty good. It's not too crazy. Uh, but a lot of times I'll turn on underneath curvature, turn on this little mesh preview, and crank this guy up. So that way I can really start to see what that surface is going to look like. You can see it kind of domes up in there. So all these boundaries, I'm going to apply a uh, tangency to all of them. That should smooth it out a little bit better. It looks a heck of a lot better. You can kind of see where it's coming in from the tubes. Now that big tube is a lot larger, so it still has to create kind of curvature going from that guy to the smaller tubes. Um, but I know i got a good patch uh, surface between one and the other. Okay. Once I have that, I do have a center plane. Everything should be symmetric. So I can select on the uh, the right side plane and just do a, uh, a mirror. About the right side plane, except we're going to do bodies to mirror. And we'll mirror that around the back side. And then I get that same surface on both sides. So it looks pretty good. So that's a good little technique for some surface modeling. Got one more for you. So the last little part I have in here is a, a parametric part. Uh, the only kind of tricky part, maybe this uh, this little pocket that I created at the bottom. So I just came in, did a rectangle cut, and then created a boss off of that, that shape and just kind of extruded on out. Okay, so the, the tricky part is gonna be, let's create some fillets. So let's uh, just pick on that face. We'll do a fillet command. Uh, on the fillet command, you can kind of see it's not giving me a preview, so it may not be able to do it. But I wanted to get all these little faces and edges. And uh, if it can't do it, let's hit OK. Sometimes this little guy will come up and uh, you can hit Feature Expert and sometimes it'll make it, sometimes it won't. 
And what it does is it tries to go through there and puts the fillets in the proper order in order to kind of optimize it and create it for those those faces. So that's a pretty complicated little fillet that it created and I just had to pick on uh, four entities there. All right, what I want to concentrate on is just this side. I don't like how the fillets kind of come down and do this little swoopy thing. I want a nice transition between all these fillets. So uh, we've got to make our parts look nice and clean. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to use some of the same tools and techniques that we did earlier. So first one I'm gonna do offset surface with the offset of zero, which is gonna be a copy surface. And let's start out with these two guys right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. Uh, there's gonna be a couple other surfaces that I'm gonna need. So again, get offset surface, that guy, and that guy. Go ahead and say okay. And then we'll go ahead and uh, remove those out of there. I've copied them, so I, I'm gonna use them again. And this time I've got, I've started out with a solid body. I'm gonna remove some of those. First off, I'm gonna select on the so surface bodies and hide those so I don't miss pick on those. And then I'm gonna do a delete face and pick on all those faces that, that I wanna get rid of. Now I also wanna get rid of these on the inside. I don't, I don't really wanna use those. And those ones that I copied. So just make sure it's on delete, hit okay. And that's what I've got left over. Of course, I turn on my other surface bodies and I've got everything except for this little inside area here. Now the only thing is I need to uh, kind of trim up some of these surfaces, so we'll start with those guys first. I'm holding down control to, to multi-select, and we'll start with this guy. So in this guy, uh, it was created with a fillet, and uh, so here's a nice little technique. I'm gonna go ahead and use a reference geometries, do a plane, and I'm just gonna select on that straight edge and this endpoint, and you'll notice that it creates uh, a, a plane on the end of that curve and perpendicular to the edge that I selected. So with the plane, planes go on forever. It slices through that. You can use that to trim the surface. I'll just select on the part I don't want and it trims that thing off. So we'll go ahead and turn off our plane. Uh, let's go ahead and work on another surface. Let's do uh, this guy right there. This one I'll do a little bit different. I could use the same technique using this curve and this point, having a, a plane slice across that. Um, but instead I'm gonna do this a little bit different. I'm gonna go to Tools, Sketch Tools, and do uh, Face Curves. And what Face Curves do is they split up the, the, the faces between kind of an X and a Y direction. And we can increase these or decrease them. In this case I really just want the blue curves there. So I'm gonna turn off pink. And uh, I really just want one curve going across a vertex. So I'm gonna pick on that endpoint there. There we go. So I have a face curve through that. And then with that face curve, it's just a 3D sketch. And with that 3D sketch, I can do a trim surface. So I'm gonna remove off that face. Uh, I've got trim tool. Let me get rid of that. That actually needs to be the 3D sketch. There we go. And I can remove off that face. And I'll just right click and just hang out of the sketch. So 3D sketches are good, planes are good. Uh, next, let's play with uh, this guy right here. We'll just show that face. And uh, so I need to start my a curve here and then come into where this little intersection is on that. So I'm going to do a new sketch. I'm going to go ahead and steal. I'll convert the entities to use that. Uh, I actually want to steal this edge too. Uh, this one is just going to be used to trim, so I'm just going to change them to construction. I'm going to do trim entities. I'll slice through this one through there. That looks good. And then I'm just going to use the regular spline command. Remember, this is a 2D sketch. I'm just going to go from one entity to the other. And then if I select on the endpoint 2015, 2016, I can just go and make tangent right there. If I'm using 2014 or 2013, i got to select on the, that, hold the control, select on that. And do change it. So the reason why I did this with the 2D sketch is notice that I've got some areas that I would have had to extend the surface and then trim, and then here I would have had to actually just trim the surface off. So uh, in this case, it's a little bit easier just to create a 2D sketch, and then with the 2D sketch, we'll just make a new surface. So I'll use planar surface using the current sketch and hit OK. Now the other the other one, I want to go ahead and get rid of that thing, and I could tell it's this guy right here. So I may want to right click and just say delete body. That way I don't accidentally select it later. So that looks good. It's nice and smooth. 
So I'm turn on a couple more surfaces. So that one's pretty good. Um, and let's go and turn them on too. So my last little jaggedy area is in this this place right here. But the problem here is that I don't have a 2D face. It's actually a, a, a surface there. So in this case, I need to create a 3D sketch. So my ribbon, hit the little drop down to a 3D sketch. And then uh, on my spline drop down, there's uh, kind of showed you equation driven curve. There's also spline on surface. So with spline on surface, I'm just kind of show you this because it's kind of fun. Is uh, I can pick on a couple different points, and as I pick across these spaces, put stuff right there. You can kind of see it actually hugs to the contours on those surfaces. So it's pretty, pretty crazy little thing. Delete him out of there. Kind of zoom into this area where I'm going to play with. Uh, same tool, spline on surface. I'm just going to pick on two endpoints, one right there, one right there. And then I'm going to do, um, because this is 3D, I have to select on the individual entities. And tangent there. And then tangent there. And then I can use this 3D sketch. You kind of see he's hugging to the side of that surface. To go ahead and uh, trim that off. So the trim surface. Get rid of that little edge there. And that looks pretty good. So now I've kind of hollowed out that little area there. And then I can just use filled surface. So filled is really good for using uh, when you have multiple surfaces all coming together to one point. You want to kind of smooth them all out. Uh, that patchwork, let's change this all to tangent. Make sure it applies to all edges. Kind of smooth that out. That looks pretty good. And we'll just say okay. You can kind of see some of the differences between uh, these are the surface edges. I've actually got two surface edges that are coming together and it highlights those in blue. Whereas if the two surfaces come together and they're stitched or knitted together, then it creates just a black edge. And that's kind of what I want to do is push all this stuff together. I'm going to use a knit surface. Select on these different entities. That's good. And if I have the option here to create a solid, then it will, I don't have any gaps or holes or anything and it's good to go. So now notice that I do have one complete solid body there. And you can kind of tell the big difference between what this guy looks like over here and this guy. And uh, just to make it a little fair, let's turn off our edges. You can kind of see which one looks a lot smoother. So then I've got some work I can do on the other side. Occasionally you can do mirroring. Uh, occasionally you can't. But that's some really good techniques. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, start coming to some of our uh, micro events. And hope to see you there. Thanks. Mm -hmm.